Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have something a little bit different for you guys today that I think you might enjoy. An unboxing video! Before we get into the specs of the scooter, the GoTrax G3 Plus, um, I'm just gonna do like, I guess, a little bit of a backstory of why we got a scooter. Why did we even purchase this? Uh, I think it's because we were in Nashville and we were riding the Lime scooters and the Bird scooters. And they were really fun, so we decided to get one. It was our first time riding them, so we decided, man, uh, you know, those things, they, they go, it seems like they go pretty fast, but uh, I don't think they go that fast. And this one supposedly goes a lot faster, and uh, they have this at Walmart for three ninety eight, and uh, has good mileage, good miles per hour. He does his research. Did a lot of research. Did a lot of research. And, uh, this one, I believe, might be a brand new release because there's no videos on YouTube. It's not even on Amazon, but like it is one, at Walmart. There's one, like one review of it on Walmart. That's yep, it. One review. So let's get into the specs and stuff. So we're going to do this a little bit different than how we usually do it. Cause usually I'm like in the frame the whole time, but since he did all the research, he's going to be in the frame the whole time and I'm going to do the thing with the camera. So then y'all can see it. Another quick note is that we just moved into this apartment. And so we have stuff laying around everywhere. So please don't, but don't. we do have a nice Christmas tree. We do, it's very nice. Don't judge us, please. <laughs> so here's another quick look of the outside of the box. You can uh, see some of the stuff on the bottom of it, but Casey's gonna go over it in a little bit more detail here, all right? All right guys, so here we go. We got the GoTrax G3 Plus folding e-scooter. Has 10 inch air fill tires, 18 miles per hour max speed, 18 miles range, has LED headlights, 220 pound max weight, 300 watt motor, just a single wheel motor, uh, has disc brakes, uh, only on the rear. Um, this scooter, there's not much reviews, uh, actually there's only one review and pretty much anywhere on the internet. Um, Walmart sells these in store, not at Walmart, I've only found it in one out of about five. Uh, it's $398, and for the price range, this is probably the best specs on a scooter. Uh, most scooters to this, these specs range from 498, 598, even up to 698. Uh, so I went with this one because it seemed like it was a great deal. Uh, I think it's new to the market. Um, YouTube, there's only one video on it and it's actually from GoTrax and all they show you is, you know, them putting it together. So there's not any reviews on YouTube. So that's why we're doing, just doing a uh, video here today. All right, so now he's gonna get to actually unboxing the scooter. He's got a pair of scissors somewhere back there behind him, so <laughs> let's dive right in. All right, let's see what we got. This is a fresh unboxing. I have not seen it yet. This is our first e-scooter that we purchased. So the excitement is real. Looking to drive in many places where we're not supposed to be driving. Cardboard, we've got a few. Got a user manual here. Shows how to assemble the scooter, how to charge it. Always remember, before you get one of these scooters, charge the battery fully, because you will ruin the battery if you do not charge it fully before you ride it. Uh, maintenance and repair. Good thing about getting these at Walmart is, you know, if this thing has any error codes, anything wrong with it at all, you know, it's simple to take it back to Walmart. And if you read the reviews on Amazon about these, these brands, especially like Segway, uh, a lot of these brands, they don't really, uh, you know, buy by their warranties. And uh, you, you don't want to spend $400 on a scooter and not be able to take it back if there's an error code or anything wrong with it at all. So. That's why I chose to get one from Walmart. I was looking at Target as well. So, see what else we have. More cardboard. That's always nice. Looks like a cat scratching post. Dual usage. Okay, so, looks like we got scooter here. Pretty heavy scooter. I'd say probably, I don't think it said it on the box, but I'd say probably 60 pounds. Here we go. Got brake there for it. Some uh, large wheels, it seems like. So 
So I wanted to get the best angle that I could with it still being on the ground and with us still being all the way in the picture. So y'all are way up there now. Anyways, he has successfully taken the scooter out of the box and he's going to continue to unbox it. Unbox it. Unbox it. Uh, well, first of all, it is locked into position here. There is a scooter lock. I'm not 100% sure how to get those disengaged, but we'll see. Manual. So to unlock the scooter, it says right here on the fender, it says press on the outside of the fender to unlock the scooter from the hook. Okay. Hope I don't break this. Oh, that wasn't that bad. Just like that. Just like that. There we are. We got a little bit more wrapping paper here. It folds down like that so you can, you know, anywhere you can fold it up and carry it with you wherever on a bus, on the metro train, on the subway. Where's your scissors at? Right. So he's got the bubble wrap off of the stem. So, so now I'm going to lock in position there. There's a kickstand on this side right here. Don't know if you can see that, but boom, just like that. Charging ports right here. And we'll show you all, all this closer up better to you. Oh, there it is right there. No handlebars. Yep, I've got the handlebars. She's got the handlebars. I have them. We're gonna try to ride it without it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. With that big old thing sticking outside. Anyways. Alright, so we got the handlebars here. And a trusted pair of scissors that you never run with. You're always supposed to cut away from yourself, but here he is doing the opposite. Dangerous. Okay, so this box. Is that the handlebar? What else do we have in that box? It looks like we have the charging cable right here, as well as some nuts and bolts and screws and other things that I um, don't know the names for. I guess those are going to be used to screw this handlebar on there. And there's also... Continue, babe. <laughs> and there's also another little, uh, kind of, instru it's not a manual per se, it's just a little piece of, like, paper, cardboard. It's another thing that tells you how to make the scooter, how to assemble the scooter. So here's the other side of the scooter where we were saying the kickstand and the charging port was. Right there, very nice and crisp. Opens very well. Charge port. Like I said, make sure you charge it fully before your first use or you will kill the battery. So far it seems to be a pretty good looking scooter here. Yeah. Has a nice rubber deck here. Good traction. Nice length. Uh, you're not really supposed to do it. Well, I mean you can if you're under the weight limit. It has max weight of 220 pounds. But me and Isabella rode on one scooter one of the bird scooters and um it carried us you know easily so and together we're over we're over 250 pounds probably together so now coming up the side here you'll see it on both sides of the scooter if you get the scooter uh the logo go tracks looks just like the one that's on the deck right down here and once you reach the top you'll see that we still do not have the handles on it this is for the handbrake while we get that connected. Here's the handlebar right here. Uh, this is gonna be the front side where the light's at right here. Has nice grip texture for the handles. Brake. Little bell here, little pullback. Boom. <laughs> Thumb throttle, has cruise control. It's got a nice display. Uh, on the box it looks pretty decent. We'll see what it looks like at in daytime and nighttime when we turn it on. Yeah, as Isabella said, got a nice headlight here. We'll peel that off, you know, when it's fresh and put together. So here it is with the handlebar on it. We haven't quite actually put it together yet, but it's looking pretty crisp. Really, in my opinion, it's a good looking scooter. Nice and long. Yeah, it's pretty tall. Go stand next to it. He's 5'8 for reference. It's pretty. Oh, tall scooter. It's a pretty good size scooter. And plenty of room for me and Isabella. Yep. Stand on it like this. 
Isabella stand back here? Yep. <laughs> Take out the scooter console and assembly tools, wrench and screws from the box. Check the parts list to confirm the parts are not damaged or lost during transition. Press down on the rear fender to separate the plug hook. Put it upright. Once the scooter is locked in the right position, verify by gently trying to fold. Pull the handbrake towards you and insert the round metal piece into the opening. String the small silver cord through the solid piece of the handbrake. Make sure the metal piece on the brake cord is pushed fully into the handbrake. It has to go all the way through to here. Hmm. Pretty tough. Hmm. <laughs> kind of tough. Kind of tough. Not going to lie. I think we're doing this right. So what it said was right here, it said to pull back the handbrake. Whoops. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> pull back the handbrake and you put the little metal piece inside the little disc right there. I don't know if y'all can see it because my camera is refusing to focus. So what he's doing right now is he's trying to see if you can adjust the brakes from the back back there because for some reason we cannot. That made it looser. Did it? Yeah, it did. Mm. Yeah, he's trying to adjust it back there so then we can pull this part in the front to where it's supposed to be on this side. Was it super tough? So what we're trying now is to fold the scooter down see if we can uh, release some if, tension. Yeah, release some tension and see if we can pull that little piece in that's being a pain in the butt. If you had to rate assembly for this, what would you rate it? Right now, ah, difficult to say. I'd say um, right now it's a ten. A yeah, ten out might, of I'm, a ten out of ten. Yeah, that might or be ten difficulty. Ten difficulty for this piece only. <laughs> this is just getting the the brakes into the handlebars right there. Right, we might got it. You got okay, it? we got it. Wow. But we'll have to tighten this piece here. We finally show them it. show them what you did here. So have you ever come this issue? Let's lay this this way. If you ever come to the issue where you have to stretch this cord along the brake here, but it won't go far enough, which we experienced, <sighs> just come back here. It came with this uh, tool here to, well, I guess for anything, but it so, just so happens that it fits the screws here for the brakes. So I just loosen that up a little bit. Now we'll have to make sure that it's, you know, Got good brakes here. So I will uh, find a way to tighten that. Just like that. Push this forward without the wire. And we'll tighten that back up. 
make sure it's tight. So just for reference, my camera's been recording for about eight minutes now, just trying to get that little piece he's messing with, the brakes, to extend long enough to fit into that little piece. And I'll give you all another close up of this piece up here that he's talking about, but we're not gonna undo it, because that would, that would be awful. This uh, cord's gonna come separate from the handlebars, so you have to put this handlebar on later. Uh, so you have to feed this metal piece here to the slot for the brake and feed it along here, a little wire, and this has to fall into this groove here. If y'all can see that. Very difficult to do. Um, so. Yeah. Like so we, we came down here, loosened this, this bolt here, and uh, pulled out just enough to where we can slot it in. And then I held this black piece up here and pulled the wire back and tighten it back up. So we should have nice tight brakes. So we've now stood the bad boy back up and for some reason my hands are on fire. I didn't really even do that much, but they're burning. I don't think it's because of the scooter. I think it's because I have weak hands. Anyways, we have stood the scooter back up. I'm five feet tall and it comes, if I put one foot on it, it comes up to, you know, right about where my chest is, right here. So. It's a pretty good height, really. I mean, I kind of feel like I'm too small for it. Why is something smaller for five feet tall? I think it's a good fit for you. <laughs> okay. Now what we're doing is we're going through that little screw bag that I uh, picked up and showed y'all earlier. These are for the handlebars, and it comes with two extra screws here. On the bag it says spare screws for the handlebar assembly. So it's gonna come with, yeah. So really the only thing you need to put together is the handlebar, and it's gonna be two holes on the side. Both sides are gonna be two holes, and it's gonna be one uh, set on the back side here. So six screws total. So as we're screwing in these last two screws, how would you say, how easy would you say uh, screwing them in is? Uh, one out of 10, 10 being the hardest and one being the easiest? Uh, it's about two. About a two. The first two screws went in nice. Uh, second two screws, the holes are kind of iffy, matching up. These last two, a little iffy, but. Nothing we can't work with. Yep. Yeah. Nothing like a little warp screw. Never hurt anybody. This is our cat, Jinx. She's been in our room meowing her head off, so we decided we'd come let her make an appearance. So, uh, it turns out neither of us can properly read, and although we've screwed this thing together, what you just saw, we missed a power cord that was supposed to go on the inside. So, what he's gonna do right now is he's gonna take it apart, and I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna spare you all that, and I'll show you guys the power cord on the inside, and <laughs> us doing it the right way. Make sure you read the instruction manual. Make sure you read the instruction manual. Louder for everybody in the back, please. So he's finally unscrewed, <laughs> unscrewed the scooter. Now he's taking the top off. Long and behold, there is a cord that you must connect. A little deep in there, but there it is. There's a slot there, so you know exactly where it goes. Connected, and uh, we're going to screw it back together again. So he successfully put the handlebars back on the scooter. So now we are going to turn it on really quick and uh, see what happens. Okay, quick note before we turn this thing on: um, when tightening these screws, uh, be careful because these screws seem kind of cheap and. I almost stripped or possibly did strip this screw just by giving it just a little bit more pressure. 
So just note on that. Okay, so we're gonna remove these stickers. Fresh. Fresh. Okay, remove the headlight sticker as well. Okay. Is there a brake sticker? All right, so press screw on, press hold button, through there, all right. Okay, it has a nice display, very bright. This is your battery power here, so we got half charge right now, miles per hour. It, it will show your mileage at the bottom here. You can't reset that. Um, Power the headlight off, screws power on, double click through a button. Woo! There's the headlight. Ooh, pretty bright, pretty yeah, bright. Yeah, very bright. And the brake light here. That's the tail light and... What is that? It's the brake light. Oh, wow. So, there you have it. So here's another look at what the headlight looks like um, with less light turned on in the apartment. It's pretty bright, like. Yeah, pretty bright. So excuse very, the mess. Yeah, excuse the mess. And the cat. And then the brake lights down here, they do blink. But okay, nice little looking display. Very nice, very bright. We do have a cruise control knob right here, well, button. You press and hold for about 10 seconds and you'll go a nice constant speed. So we've just hooked the scooter up to the charger. You can see right down here, it'll show you the charging progress. If it's red, it's not all the way charged. If it's green, it will be all the way charged. And uh, we're not immediately hopping on it because we did see one guy at one of the shopping centers say that um, his wife's scooter, she rode it before it was fully charged and it just didn't last as long as it was supposed to. So. We're going to let it charge, and I'm going to do my thing, and Casey's going to do his thing, and we will be back for a test ride. Okay, so uh, to be honest, it has been a couple of days since uh, we unboxed the scooter, and he has ridden it a couple of times, and I rode on it once with him, um, and there's like this kind of neat, weird, not really issue, but I don't know what other word to use um, concerning the mileage. It's not an issue. It's like a, like a, a thing. He's, he'll explain it. He will. So it's not really a big issue at all. I, I, actually, it's probably just part of the whole ordeal, but whenever you turn the scooter on, it shows your mileage that you have on the scooter right there. I got 44 miles, and then it goes to zero. I guess it just shows how many miles you're going to put on this trip. But when you turn it on initially, it shows how many miles you put on it. So I don't know if y'all can tell, but I did change the camera that I'm using. I'm using my GoPro now. It's like a Hero 6 or something. I don't know. It's old. Um, but just so that I wouldn't have to risk damaging my camera, we're going to get started.
All right, so we just got back from riding the scooter around downtown and uh, we just wanted to go over a couple of things, including the climbing angle, top speed, uh, like the mileage and how it works, the total time that we rode and the ride quality. And we're gonna give ratings as well. So he's gonna start off with the climbing angle. Climbing angle, it doesn't note on the box, the climbing angle of the scooter, but I'm gonna guess it's around 15 degrees. Uh, we were both riding on it together and going along straight away before we went up the hill It was about 18 miles an hour with both of us on there, which is well over the 220 pound max weight limit and uh, It was going up the hill fine, but it was slowed down gradually to about six miles an hour at the very top of the hill uh, Once once we got just one of us on there, you know came back up to speed about 15 miles an hour mm -hmm. So it's got enough power now the top speed I think was achieved when we went down the hill and the scooter maxes out it maxes out at 18 miles an hour but it felt like it was only 20 or 22 we're, miles we were an hour. going over 20 miles an hour but the speedometer on the scooter is only maxed out at 18 miles an hour yeah and once we got down at the bottom of the hill it almost seemed like it was slowing itself down to get back to 18 miles an hour right now, the total mileage, I'm gonna let him explain this one because it's kind of weird the way that it works. Um, so the scooter has 18 miles max range and you're only gonna achieve that 18 miles if you're in the, you know, I guess they call it the eco mode where you're going about 12 to 15 miles per hour. Um, with going full speed the whole time, you're only gonna get about 10 miles on a single charge, not nowhere near the 18. And with us together riding on it is about eight miles. So not much difference with that added weight. Now, another important thing to note is that when you turn the scooter off, it'll show you your total mileage that you have, and then when you start it, is it it'll like restart kind of. Yeah, once you turn the scooter on, it'll show uh, the mile, the speedometer. It'll say odometer. Odometer. It'll show how many miles you have, and then it'll click to zero, showing how many miles for the trip that you're for the on. Trip you're going to be on. Yeah, and we don't have an exact what whatever we did because we did turn it off at one point and then restart got, it. We got about 50 miles on it so far. Yeah, but the total amount of time we've had the scooter. Um, now, the total time that we were out there, it, it's, I don't have my watch on, it's like seven o'clock right now. We got there around like 5, 15-ish and we left at like 6.30ish. But like I said, we did stop and we did turn the scooter off, but we were, we were riding it for a pretty good amount of time. Yeah, about an hour. About an hour. Yeah. Um, and what is it, what is it? It doesn't say how, how long it will go before nope. dying. Nope. No. Okay. Um, and now the ride quality. The ride quality is okay. Um, not something you want to go off the road with. It doesn't have suspension. So the soft uh, ride is going to be mostly from the tires. They're air filled. Um, so, you know, I took this thing off some curves and kind of so like speed bumps. You can kind of jump it off like a regular, like a you know, regular kick scooter and get a little bit of air. But um, I took it off road as well, like off in the grass and you're like, you know, you're on there like, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little rough, it's a little rough, no suspension. Right, right. So now to our ratings, um, what we would rate each of these categories being. So for the climbing angle, one out of 10, 10 being the best and one being like not the best. Climb, climbing angle, I would give the scooter probably about, uh, probably about a five because other scooters just for a little bit more, you can get 20 degrees or 25 degrees climbing angle. This one only gets 15, so I give it about a five out of 10. I also give it a five out of 10 and I, I only give it a five out of 10 because of the speed that it goes when you're going up that angle. Granted, both of us were on it, but like you said, it did go from like 15 to like a six. You know, pretty quickly. Pretty quick. It was you have very noticeable difference. Um, top speed. Top speed, 18 miles an hour for this scooter is this scooter is only 398 dollars. Uh, 18 miles an hour is pretty high for this price range, so I give that about an eight out of ten for price to speed ratio. I'm a little bit different. I I feel like I mean, granted, I probably would have to buy another scooter, but I want to go faster, so. I mean, I guess at the price point, 18 miles an hour is good, so I gave it like an 8.5, but you know, you get on this one and then you do more research and see what other scooters can get, and you're like, wow, <laughs> I want to go like 20 miles an hour, I want to go like 25, 26, so yeah, I guess but, 8 out of 5. Yeah, so if you want to go 
uh, some scooters, you know, from like Segway, Jetson, they go 15 miles an hour. They cost around 398, 498, mm -hmm. you know, around that price range as well. So this one goes a little bit faster than those. But also, like I said about the climbing angle, it's not as much. Yep, yep. Now mileage. He has rode the scooter by himself more than I have. I, I've only ridden it by myself twice. All the other times were with him on it. So I'm gonna let him, only him give a one out of 10 or whatever um, for mileage. Mileage, um, I get the mileage about, I get about a five out of 10 because going full speed, which you wanna go full speed all the time, you're not gonna get 18 miles on the single charge. You're gonna get around 10 max. That depends on the weight. I'm I'm lighter than usual, so yeah. Five out of ten. Five out of ten. Um, now the total time that we were riding it, I would give it a ten out of ten because I, I feel like most viewers say that it's like a thirty minute type on a full charge, but I feel I, I didn't keep track, but I feel like we were on it for more than thirty minutes. Um, so I give it a ten out of ten for me. Yeah. I give it about kind of it kind of equals out to the miles so i'll still give it yeah five out of ten he okay well i will go over what he says more than me because he has more experience with it <laughs> but that's all we've got for this video um i would stay tuned it's you know christmas is coming up so there's gonna be a lot more stuff i can potentially make videos out of Go, go track G3 Plus. Yep. $398. Walmart. Not a bad deal for a beginner. Uh, it's not at every Walmart. So, either buy it online, which some reviews are not that good because some, it seems like some of these people are getting different models than this scooter. So, I would try to find it in the store. And uh, if it's not what you want, you can always return it to Walmart. But with that, uh, that's all we have for you. So we will see you guys next time. Peace.